Hey guys, here we go into a video on Roy Jones Jr.'s training Chris Eubank video uh, and how this kind of drill would really help somebody like Errol Spence, uh, not only offensively, uh, but defensively as well. Um, now everyone's seen this video. It's used to teach and train weight transfers. It's going to be the positions that you throw punches in, right? Throw in the right hand, throw in a left hook, throw in a right hand, throw in a left hook, right? And in theory, uh, if you're in the middle, right, the middle is going to be the neutral position. And what he's teaching him is how to fight from position two on the back foot and position one on the front foot. How to get used to being in these positions. Uh, because these are the positions that you're going to wind up in when you finish your line. Um, now, uh, just a real quick amount announcement. Um, again, my Patreon's kind of getting a, a little bit out of hand. There are a lot of patrons there, a lot of... Um, a lot of comments, a lot of people to break stuff down. So I'm going to be layering it soon and kind of closing down um, the patronage as soon as I get around 30 more members. Um, so check it out. If you want to learn how to build and develop your line and develop speed and power in your punches, um, check out my Patreon. It's only $10 a month right now. Um, you'll have access to the full library of Patreon videos. Um, when I take it down, I'm going to be re retooling some things. Um, and it's going to be $20 a month in the future. Um, and you won't have access to every video um, and going forward they're going to be cyclings and rollings like that as well um, so you'll only have access to the videos that you've been present for uh, during the development of them so you'll have access to a few videos uh, about technique and training nothing to inhibit your growth but um, more videos the longer you've been subscribed so anyway now we're going to take a look at some of Errol Spence's heavy bag work and getting on the line with his imaginary foe here and how he gets on the line and all of these punches are basically Wing Chun punches right he's getting on the line he's not changing positions even though he's transferring his weight from the front foot to the back foot right going front foot back foot front foot back foot and then going back foot front foot with the right hand right getting front throwing these shots but there's not a lot of power in these shots now granted I'm not gonna let Errol Spence hit me with any of these punches but he's not really changing positions or transferring his weight when he moves, when he uses any of these punches. So what I mean by that is he's not moving his head, right? His head is not getting to the back leg. His head is not getting to the front leg. He's just in this neutral position, tapping the bag. Now you will develop power like doing this. You will develop stuff, but you also need to practice transitioning your weight and changing positions uh, when you hit the heavy bag. Um, if you're going to really develop really good power in your power punches. Uh, because right now he's only developing power in his kind of more snappy um, get on the line and hide these punches uh, kind of attacks. Now a little bit of more work here uh, transferring his weight. But let's go ahead and take a look at him on the pads doing kind of a similar style of attack. Now again, it's one thing if you're just drilling something on the heavy bag. Uh, but it's another thing if you use a similar style also in your other forms of training. Now, one thing that Errol Spence is doing a really good job of is the pressure, okay? Every time he moves forward on the front foot, he's attacking or blocking, right? But he's not doing a lot of feinting. There are a lot of attacks, and every time he gets to the front foot, right, you can see him making a new attack, right? But he's not changing positions. He's not really transferring his weight. His head is basically in the same position every time he throws a punch. Um, and that means that he's not going to actually be getting any power into any of these shots. Again, don't punch me, Errol Spence. I know you're an athlete. You train full time to do this. It's still going to hurt. But that's why these are not knockout punches. Now, we're going to actually take a look at someone else who does not have this problem. Someone who is very good at getting weight into their punches. Gennady Golovkin. Now, what I'm talking about, about getting on the line, these are probing shots right here, okay? The, the shots that Errol Spence is getting on the line, these are these same kinds of punches. However, Gennady Golovkin uses them to open his opponent's lineup, right? So he's going to feint, right? Then probe, probe, and then his head stays in the same spot. But then as you can see here, when he shoots his right hand, he brings his weight from the back foot to the front foot, right? Very slight. But his head is going from the back foot to the front foot, and he's changing positions. Now you can tell that he's really sinking into this position 
Because after he lands, he doesn't immediately rock back, right? As you noticed, one of the things that was going on with Errol Spence, after he would come into contact with the pad, he would immediately look to change position again or center his weight back to the back foot. Whereas Golovkin can get, can get here, right? Shoot that shot and then open up that position for the left hook. Now, this is all because he's transferring his weight from the back foot to the front foot through this cross. Now we're also gonna take a look at, here it is in right here, the next line, right? And the reason that this is so important is this is, this is indicative of Golovkin being able to use his line more effectively, okay? So again, probing shots, right? Tap, tap, and then change position. But look at how far over his head gets from the back foot to the front foot when he actually throws a power shot, okay? This is very, very, very important to understand when you're generating or trying to generate power that you have many places on your line that you can make attacks, right? Boom, boom, boom. And many places that you wanna make power attacks, right? So the, the first shots here are designed, right, to teach you to cross the line with defensive responsibility, right? So here he's countering a punch. So his opponent is likely throwing a left hook, he's blocking it, and then he controls him with the right hand, then a left hand, right? You can't really see it because it's behind him on the other side. And then he finishes the exchange with a right hand over the top. But in theory, his opponent is attacking him, he's catching, and then he's gonna be feinting, controlling, and probing with a right hand, a left hook, all to get into the position to throw this right hand. Now, again, beautiful work from Golovkin and great use of his line. Not only getting onto the line and blasting with one shot, let's kind of take a look at Errol Spence again, right? Throwing one shot at a time, boom, 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 right? I mean, there's some fancy stuff in here, but not really utilizing his line very well uh, to set up power shots, right? Lots of these kind of probing, walk into them, touch the mint kind of movements, right? Notice this is the this is signaling the end of this exchange, right? Just landed a straight left hand, but notice that straight left hand is very similar to the right hands that Golovkin's landing right here, right? Bop, bop, bop. But those are only used to set up the actual next weight transition, right? Anyway, let's take a look at how all of this stuff kind of applies to the actual fights, okay? So the first thing we're going to look at, oh, and there's some more of uh, Golovkin using his line to set up attacks. Last film of Golovkin, right? Shooting his jab, slipping to the back foot, right? And then getting back on the line with the right hand into the left hook but doing a great job of using his jab, his slip, and his probing right hand to set this left hook up. A great, a great use of his line, using all of these motions to set up one left hook, right? Now I know he's landing jab, right hand, and the left hook, but all of those punches are there just so that he can set up the, the left hook there. Really great work there. Um, notice, uh, jab and the right hand are attacking the back foot and then the left hook power shot is attacking the front foot. So utilizing the jab and the right hand to threaten the back foot to force his opponent to the front foot to land a left hook. Really, really clever boxing there. Um, now, again, let's take a look at exactly how Errol Spence's fighting translates um, like in his fight with, Errol, with uh, Kel Brook. So again, getting right onto the line and just throwing punches. Right? He's not transitioning his weight. There's not a lot of power into these shots. Of course, you don't want to get hit by these shots, right? But they're not huge knockout punches. Brook kind of crumbles from a lot of the abuse. But you can see how this sequence here looks exactly like his training. Right? Now, I don't want to bring his training back up, but it's uncanny how similar it is. Now, what's some of the problems with that is that Again, Errol Spence doesn't move his head. He doesn't change positions. He doesn't get his weight from the front foot to the back foot, right? He doesn't use the Roy Jones drill to move around the ring. His, and when he punches, his head is always in the same position. 
easy to counter here, easy to counter here. Now again, uh, we're gonna come back to this clip here, but take a look at this one. This is the same, I think this is the same clip. No, it's not. Oh, again, Errol Spence coming forward, shooting the jab, his head in the same position. Errol uh, Kilbrook easily able to find him with that right hand, right? And blast him with a good shot. And again, because Errol Spence doesn't move his head. He doesn't ever change positions. Even when he attacks, his head is nearly always in the same spot. Um, I guess I'm not going to be able to go back. But as you see, when he shoots his jab, his head is in the same exact position, right? And he barely gets any power into his right hand. Look at how big of a shot this is, right? Usually when you land a shot this big that you were able to set up, you knew his head was going to be there, you knock your opponent out. But he lands this good shot on Brook here, and he's not able to drop him or even wobble him. Um, again, because of the fact that he doesn't utilize very much of his line to make his attacks. He doesn't change positions. He just throws this shot very quickly, rotates his shoulders, he rotates his hips a little bit, but he doesn't actually change positions uh, to get any power into it. So now we're going to take a look at Golovkin, who was the same against uh, Brooke, right? Not the same, but who was able to get a lot of power into a lot of his shots. Now, here Golovkin gets to the line, and he gets on the line, and he sees he's going to shoot the jab, right? So he shoots the jab, and what does he do immediately after shooting it? He moves his head, right? Bringing his weight to the back foot, right? Looking to expose uh, Kelbrook's guard as he rotates from the back foot to the front foot. As you can see, Kelbrook is going forward, back, forward, back. And now he has nowhere to go except for to bring his weight forward into Golovkin's right hand, right? So Golovkin using his jab to open this space up as Brooke leans back, and then Brooke has no choice but to bring his weight back into this right hand. But because of the fact that Golovkin changes positions, he's able to get so much more power in this shot rather than just getting into this position and then rotating his shoulders like you see with Errol Spence here. Whoops. As you see with Errol Spence here, right, when he throws his straight left hand, as soon as he gets on the line into a position where he can rotate and turn and land that shot, he drives straight into the shot, straight into the shot, straight into the shot, right? Not really taking any time to transfer his weight or utilize any of his line to make a big attack. Again, Golovkin's going to do the same thing here, utilizing a little bit of his line to set up this right hand here. So he's going to get on the line with Brooke. And then he's going to slip to the outside, show him this left hook, but pay attention to his hips right now. Look at how he throws this hook. Whoops. <laughs> he throws this hook and he uses it to put himself into a position to throw his right hand with power. So not, as, not only is he not using this shot as a real punch, right? Whereas Errol Spence, a lot of times when he gets into position, he throws them as real punches. He's using this shot to realign his hips so that he has more opportunity to cross Kell Brook's line, okay? So he can land the right hand. So if Golovkin threw the right hand from this position, this is as much power as he'd be able to get into it. However, by throwing this hook first, he can realign his hips and his feet so that he can get his head all the way over this far into Kell Brook's line, right? So pay attention to the turnbuckle right here. Look at the distance between that and Golovkin's head. Now look at the distance between it here, right? So he repositions himself, and now he gets back onto the front foot through the right hand with so much more power. Again, so much more clever of a way utilizing his line than Errol Spence does with his probing kind of uh, droning tap, tap, tap kind of attacks. Again, Golovkin doing a great job shooting that shot and then bringing his weight from the back foot all the way to the front foot before letting his shot go, right? Again, Errol Spence having a hard time letting his shots go after he transitions his weight, after he changes positions, uh, causing him not to really be able to generate any, any power or as much power. Again, one more look at this, this uh, look 
So again, Golovkin shooting a left hand to the body, crossing his head over the line of the target, controlling his opponent, then throwing a beautiful left hook. But because Brook is on the back foot, Golovkin can't really get a lot of power into this shot here. So he controls him with this shot, and he's taking a step right now with his left foot, crossing it over Brook's line so that he can drag his weight across Brook's line as well, throwing this right hand. Okay, so let's take a look at this one more time, and then we're going to look at it from a top view. Crosses the line, crosses the line, controls him, crosses the line, okay? And that's how he's able to generate all this power, whereas Errol Spence is not able to generate the same kind of power or land these kind of beautiful, big, bomby shots, right? Now, again... Crosses the line, right? His, the line, because he's attacking the body, is the body at the moment. Then he controls him, tries to throw the left hook. But again, Brook is on the back foot and Golovkin is throwing a left hook, which is the left hook is much better at, at landing against opponents on the front foot because of the way that the trajectory of the punch lands. So then you have uh, Golovkin repositioning himself, controlling with the left hand, taking a step with the left foot. Right? As you notice from this position here, if Golovkin throws a right hand, he can't really get his weight into the shot. Because of where his left foot is and where Brooks' head is all the way on the back foot, he's not going to be able to cross Brooks' line and get very much weight into it. So instead of just throwing bombs and unloading, whoops, and unloading like Errol Spence does, as you see in this clip, tap, 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 right? Instead of just waiting for those punches to come, he uses that position to control him, take a step on the outside, and then really transfer his weight from the back foot to the front foot through that right hand and land a really big shot. Now, I do realize that Errol Spence gets the knockdown right there, and Gennady Golovkin is not getting a knockdown right here. But I think that the difference in power and the difference in strategy and the difference um, in result is very clear um, because Golovkin was able to beat uh, Kell Brook in only five rounds, and I think it took uh, Errol Spence 11. I'm not sure. It might be. It might have been 10, uh, but I think it was 11 rounds. might have been 12. I don't know. But um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, that's the video. Um, if you're interested, again, check out my Patreon where we where we will get we will be doing personalized breakdowns uh, with your favorite fighters to teach you not only how to expand your line, how to develop power in your punches, how to determine what punches are what, um, but how to develop the speed, the power, and the technique uh, to pull off these maneuvers in the ring yourself. Um, but um, anyway, join my Patreon soon. Um, uh, because the rates will be going up as I get more patrons. I just don't have the time to do it at this rate. Uh, but I want to get those people who want to help me out uh, early and help those people out as well. Uh, but anyway, um, come check it out. It's only 10 bucks a month, um, and it's, it's much, much better content than what's on my YouTube. Not like my YouTube's bad, you know, but the focus is different. Um, it's, it's a coaching um, uh, focus rather than a who's going to win the fight or teach people how to fight, you know. But anyway... You guys get it. Thanks, guys.